1981, Bell Aerospace, producer of air cushion vehicles, high energy lasers, spacecraft propulsion systems. 1941, Bell Aircraft, producer of just one thing, the P-39, the Era Cobra. And now one is being rebuilt and coming home to Buffalo. This was modern technology. Just remember, fellows, this plane handles much like any other. It's not a hot landing ship, but it is fast, and it may respond a little quicker than you're accustomed to. Just take it easy until you get the feel of the control. As a team, you and this plane have an important job to do in winning this war. Over 20,000 people worked at the Bell plant in the 40s. One of them was Joe Cannon of Lewiston, a 38-year Bell veteran. Joe was a P-39 test pilot. Now, he wasn't the glamorous type of test pilot that they'd make a movie about. Joe took him off the production line and into the air for the first time, flying up to a dozen of the P-39 era Cobras a day. The vehicle was, a, I think, a very innovative airplane. It was a delight to fly. I just loved to fly it. It had a tricycle landing gear, which made it easy to land and take off. It had a cockpit that was mounted high and clear so you could see all around, like most fighters didn't have in those days. The airplane was uh, really a good, low-level performing airplane. Here's another way of matching the old against the new. There were 13,000 P-39s built. There have been only 504 747s. But what about the plant in Niagara Falls? In the 40s, it was really humming. Six lines of, of P-39s lined up with thousands, 25,000 people working on them, and one uh, coming out about every hour and a half, some 25 airplanes a day coming out of that line to be flown. That's, that's an awful lot of airplanes. And uh, uh, we had, had them lined up on the ramp, uh, perhaps 100. If it got three days of snow, we were up to our ankles in P-39s. During the war, just about all the Allies flew the P-39 Era Cobra. And back then, the Russians were one of our allies. In fact, Lieutenant Colonel Petishkin of the Russian Army shot down 48 German planes in a P-39. We also had some wasps, some girls that ferried P-39s up to the Russian area too. Normally the uh, takeover was in Alaska, but we did have a limited number of Russians come in here for inspection, for checkout, for training. Uh, and for de uh, subsequent delivery of their airplanes. So they were a tough drinking, fun loving crowd, I'll tell you, believe me. But that P 39 that's coming to Buffalo, what do we know about it? Well, a lot, because of the work of the people at the Naval and Servicemen's Park on Buffalo's waterfront. Truman Partridge did a lot of the detective work. Each plane in this area, right here, had a data block applied by the company. Actually, it was right in this area here that we did find. 42-19995. And just a few days ago, we put it all together. And I talked to the pilot, I talked to the crew chief, and they have confirmed that this is the plane. The pilot, William Shomo of Jeanette, Pennsylvania. He graduated high school and became an undertaker. He has an honor in that he won the Medal of Honor, not in this particular plane, but in a P-51 Mustang when he shot down seven Japanese planes in early 1945. In one day, in one flight, in about 15 minutes. But this P-39 was named Snooks II. Snooks I, also Shomo's plane, was destroyed in an ill-fated landing with the gear up. And Snooks II? Well, Shomo changed to a more modern plane, and the P-39, number 21995, was left to rot, along with thousands of other planes in the jungles of New Guinea. And it would have stayed there except for a restaurant tour from Chino, California. He brought the plane back to the States, added a lot of sheet metal and bolts, and donated it to the folks in Buffalo to rest along with the USS The Sullivans and the USS Little Rock at Servicemen's Park. All that remains now is to get the plane painted and polished, and with a lot of help from the Youth Careers Program of Catholic Charities, that's just what's happening. And everything has to be done right, from the tip of the 37-millimeter cannon to the four wing-mounted machine guns, all the way back to the tail. Well, that's the story, Lieutenant. She's all yours. And now, after 40 years, after fighting the war, after being abandoned and left to decompose in the jungles of New Guinea, P-39-21995 is back in western New York, where it was originally conceived, to stand as a living monument, not only to the men who used it in war, 
but the men and women who created it to protect our freedom. To them, this P-39 will always be flying.